So our topic for today is neuropharmacology. Now for the definition, neuropharmacology can be defined as a study of drugs that alter processes controlled by the nervous system. So they are divided into two broad categories. First is the peripheral nervous system drugs and second the central nervous system drugs. So how do neurons regulate physiologic processes? So the figure depicts two cells, the neuron and the postsynaptic cell. The postsynaptic cell might be another neuron, a muscle, or a cell within a secretory gland. As indicated, there are two major basic steps, axonal conduction and synaptic transmission wherein the process by which the neuron influences the behavior of the postsynaptic cell. So axonal conduction is simply the process of conducting the action potential down the axon of the neuron. So as shown in the figure, synaptic transmission requires the release of neurotransmitter molecules from the axon terminal followed by binding of these molecules the receptors on the postsynaptic cell. So the steps in synaptic transmission. Step one is the synthesis of transmitter from precursor molecules. Step two, the storage of transmitter in vesicles. Third will be the release of transmitter. So in response to an action potential, Vesicles fuse with the terminal membrane and discharge their contents into the synaptic gap. Fourth, action at receptor. So the transmitter binds reversibly or irreversibly to its receptor on the postsynaptic cell, causing a response in that cell. Fifth is the termination of transmission. Transmission dissociates from its receptor and is then removed from the synaptic gap, either by reuptake into the nerve terminal, enzymatic degradation, or diffusion from the gap. The peripheral nervous system has two major divisions, the autonomic nervous system and the somatic motor system. So the autonomic nervous system has two major divisions, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system has several functions relevant to pharmacology. It slows the heart rate, it increases gastric secretion. It empties the bladder and bowel. It focuses the eye for near vision, constrict the pupils, and contracts bronchial smooth muscle. The principal functions of the sympathetic nervous system are the regulation of the cardiovascular system, the regulation of body temperature, and the implementation of the fight or flight response. The peripheral nervous system employs three transmitters, the acetylcholine, the norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Acetylcholine is the transmitter released by all three ganglionic neurons of the sympathetic and of the parasympathetic nervous system. It also is the transmitter for all postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic nervous system and the postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system that go to the sweat glands and all the motor neurons. On the other hand, Norepinephrine is a transmitter released by all postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system 
except those that go to the sweat glands. And epinephrine is the major transmitter released by the adrenal medulla. Now for the basic anatomy. Note that there are two neurons in the pathway leading from the spinal cord to organs innervated by parasympathetic nerves. So the junction, the synapse between these two neurons, occurs within a structure called the ganglion. The ganglion is simply a mass of nerve cell bodies. So the neurons that go from the spinal cord to the parasympathetic ganglia are called preganglionic neuron. Whereas the neurons that go from the ganglia to effector organs are called postganglionic neurons. As with parasympathetic nervous system, the junction between the neurons in the sympathetic nervous system are located in the ganglia. Neurons leading from the spinal cord to the sympathetic ganglia are called preganglionic neurons, and neurons leading from ganglia to effector organs are termed postganglionic neuron. The adrenal medulla can be looked on as the functional equivalent of a postganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system because the adrenal medulla is similar in function to a postganglionic neuron. The nerve leading from the spinal cord to the adrenal gland is commonly referred to as preganglionic neuron even though there is no ganglion in this pathway. So for the locations of cholinergic and adrenergic receptor subtypes, so nicotinic and receptors are located on the cell bodies of all postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system, and also located on cells of the adrenal medulla. Nicotinic M receptors are located on skeletal muscle. Muscarinic receptors are located on all organs regulated by the parasympathetic nervous system. Muscarinic receptors are also located on the sweat glands. Adrenergic receptors, the alpha, the beta, or both, are located on all organs regulated by the sympathetic nervous system. Adrenergic receptors are also located on organs regulated by epinephrine released from the adrenal medulla. So the importance of this diagram shows the pharmacologically irrelevant responses to activation of the three major subtypes of cholinergic receptors, nicotinic N, nicotinic M, and muscarinic. Now for the functions of peripheral cholinergic receptor subtypes. So nicotinic N, the location, all autonomic nervous system, ganglia, and the adrenal medulla. So the response to receptor activation is a stimulation of parasympathetic and sympathetic ganglionic nerves and the release of penephrine from the adrenal medulla. Now for the nicotinic M, the location, is the neuromuscular junction. The response to receptor activation is contraction of the skeletal muscle. And for the muscarinic, it is located on all parasympathetic organs, wherein in the eye, the response will be contraction of the ciliary muscle and contraction of the iris sphincter muscle, causing meiosis. Now, in the heart, it decreases the heart rate. In the lungs, there is constriction of bronchi and promotion of secretions. In the bladder, there will be contraction of the detrusor, the relaxation of the trigone, and coordinated contraction of the detrusor and relaxation of trigone and sphincter, causing voiding of the bladder. In the GI tract, it causes salivation, increase the gastric secretions, increase intestinal tone and motility, and defecation. In the sweat glands, there will be generalized sweating. In the sex organ, there will be erection. And in the blood vessels, vasodilation. And thank you for watching.